Scott, you guys were hanging in well um, there through the first quarter. What happened at the end? It looked like you sent uh, New York the line a couple possessions in succession, but what did you see? Well, yeah, we, we fouled in the first quarter and then we turned the ball over, gave them opportunities in transition. Um, but they all played us. They all played us uh, from the start. And if you don't play with physicality and some determination, some grit, New York's going to do that. They got some. They got some pretty strong physical athletes. But you got to be able to match that. We didn't do that. We didn't do that to the start. In the second quarter, we couldn't. We couldn't buy a bucket. Uh, and that's the deficit was hard. We tried to fight back, but if you don't, if you don't compete at the at the with some physicality, it's gonna it's gonna be a long night. And we got we got to be better. It seems like when you guys do come out with these good starts, it, it's often led by Russell, and he's hyper aggressive is his aggression when that happens a symptom of everything else going right like you guys are playing well anyways and he's able to capitalize or do you guys kind of need him to, to get off to those types of starts well, we need we need him to get off the good starts but we need them to you know, keep attacking and, and open up the paint uh, and, and allow our uh, our shooters to be you know spot up catch up catch and shoot shots uh, but we didn't we didn't come out with the you know, that middle of that second quarter, the physicality, they, they cranked it up another level and and we didn't match it. And then Randall was making shots all over the floor. The first one, yeah, second one, but it was it wasn't it wasn't nearly they didn't fill us. And, and if you, they don't fill you, they're just gonna run their offense, they're gonna end up uh, getting shots that if they miss it's on them. And we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't do the good job, uh, the good enough job tonight to prevent them from getting easy shots. Red. Hey Scott, um, this, uh, you mentioned the last game, kind of issues with the bench that you wanted to see improve tonight. I, I, what did you see out of them? Well, I mean, they they played well in the fourth quarter, but you know the game was. Uh, already pretty much decided. Um, we didn't play well, you know. Not just the bench; our starters didn't play well. Um, we we played better. We're going to play better. Uh, like I said, we didn't. This team is a physical team. They got some high flying centers. They got a really incredible hot player at All Star Randall, and they got some really good players that that are improving and and. And we, we let them, we were, we were chasing that basketball all, all over the court in the first half. And when you do that, uh, it's going to be hard to get stops. And then we turned the ball over too many times as well. And, and Scott, you guys are our sub 500 team and, and the trade deadline will come and go by the time the next time you guys play. Do, do you as a coach feel the need to say anything is there an anxiety in a situation like this in the locker room or you just let that breathe no i mean we're all we've been in this business other than the the, the few rookies that we have that this is part of it this is everybody everybody in the league is is trying to improve their team and if you got opportunities to improve your team you do it it's nothing personal it's business and i, I don't think that's affecting how we played the physicality tonight. Uh, we need to be better. Uh, we all do, myself included. We need to we need to get better, and it needs to be better quickly going into this next game. Neil, yeah. Scott, you guys have talked about this physicality, defensive resistance not being there, you know, multiple times throughout the season already. Why do you think it continues to be the case when everybody knows that, okay, we really have to come out and be physical against a team that was physical with you previously already? Well, we got to have more grit and we got to be able to do that. Um, got to find a way. Trying to mix things up and, and, and change some of the rotations that nothing seemed to work tonight. Um, but we got, we have to find a way to, to battle and to compete for every uh, inch of the floor. And like I said tonight, it wasn't good, wasn't good enough. We need to be better. And uh, tonight, they they got they got where they wanted to go. And when you when you do that, uh, RJ got where he wanted to go. Randall got where he wanted to go. 
when you do that, you're chasing the basketball, you're chasing the, you're chasing the game around, and you got open shooters on the floor, and then it makes it tough for closeout. So we, we have to be better. We have to be better all the way around. Hey, Mo, obviously not the result you guys wanted. What do you think you guys can take from this game and try and, you know, turn things around on Thursday? Um, come to work tomorrow um, and play hard on Thursday. Fred? Hey, Mo. Um, Scott talked a lot about lack of physicality tonight. I'm just wondering what you saw from, from that vantage point. And you're, you're generally a pretty physical player. I, I'm wondering what you, what you do to maintain your physicality on nights when you just kind of feel like, you know, you're, you're having just kind of an off day or whatever. I agree with coach. Um, and yeah, it's kind of a, kind of an instinct of survival in this league for me. So that's what I got to do to survive in this, not survive, but be in this league, honestly. So that's the niche I, I found for myself and that's what I got to do every night. So, um, Maybe sometimes get hit on purpose. So you wake up, just shaking up, but you always got to play hard. Hey, Denny, obviously not the result you guys wanted, but you were able to knock some of your shots down. Coach told us that, you know, he talked with you a little bit yesterday. Just what did that do for you? And what do you hope that does for you going forward? I mean, I'm always trying to be confident and uh, play my game. Um, and coach really uh, came up and we, we talked and, uh, you know, he, he said some great things. He said some great things who, who made me positive, made me stay positive. And, uh, you know, for now, we just, I just, I, I don't really care. I just, we try to win. We're trying to make it, uh, we're trying to make it to the playoffs. So, I mean, for me, even though uh, I had a good game, I feel like um, it doesn't matter because we didn't get the win, you know? Um, we aim in there, and uh, hopefully we're going to get better. Ava? Denny, what do you feel like you were able to take advantage of tonight um, in your minutes? Just play hard, you know? Just be, be aggressive, uh, play hard, not give up not give up on any play. And, and you saw that. We, we were fighting on the court until the last minute. So even though I fouled, I uh, fouled out my first my first time in my career, and so uh, it means pretty much that I, I I tried my best. And when you get a chance to see a team again back to back, does it change anything for you guys uh, in the in between games in terms of how you prepare or what you might get a chance to focus on? A hundred percent. Feel like we're a group of winners. Uh, we have great leaders and great team, and I feel like. Um, three times in a row to lose to the same team is not acceptable. And we're going to do everything we can. We're going to prepare uh, as best as we can. And I think we're going to come back different Thursday. Fred? Hey, Denny. Um, one of the things that rookies talk about every year is the adjustment to just the NBA schedule and, and NBA lifestyle. And, and this year for, for you as a rookie, it's just crazy with so many games back into such a short amount of time. What has this year been like for you physically just adjusting to a schedule like this? So first of all, no rookie uh, ever in the NBA had this year, like just like how we schedule things to the, like today in COVID situations. I feel like in the beginning, everything went so fast, you know? I wasn't, um, I wasn't really um, used to the pace and the amount of games you play and, and like you, you finish one game and the next day you all, you're on the court again. So uh, it's fun, it's different, you know, it's different. It makes you um, forget about the last game, whether it's good or bad and just continue and, and, and have continuation in your game. And I feel like a lot of times I enjoyed it uh, but of course, there's some times that you feel a little bit more fatigue. Uh, but I think I do a pretty good job of, of uh, putting in my work. I have great uh, staff around me, great um, medical staff and coaches around me to, to make sure that I'm coming focused to every game. 
and my body is right there. So, I mean, hopefully it's going to continue through the rest of my career. Um, I think they do a pretty good job. Kellen. Hey, Denny. I think you told us in your very first press conference with the media that you're a very competitive person and you hate losing. So when the team is losing, how does that impact you like mentally and how do you just kind of keep motivated and kind of forget about the losses and, and move to the next one? You know why it's hard for me losing? Because I see every day the group of guys we have. And I believe so much that we are so much better and from, from what we play. And, and, and I feel like um, we, we're getting there. I mean, we, we, we're trying to improve. Um, we're trying to make changes. We're trying to play harder. And, and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But it's, when we're going to be consistent, I think we're going to be a great team. And nothing's over yet. We're still fighting. We're going to come to every game 100%. And, you know, everybody hates losing. Everybody hates losing because we've got a lot of competitors in the team. So um, hopefully we lose much as less as possible. What's the main reason of tonight's loss of your team? And how could you explain the, the second half of that game? Uh, first place, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, well, I don't think we even arrived to the arena tonight. Honestly, we, we were still in the hotel today. And we, we didn't bring any focus, any energy, any, and we damn sure didn't play defense. So that's why we lost. The second half, we didn't, we didn't play defense in that half either. So, yeah. And, and also about the trade deadline who's coming up, how, has there any effect on, in the team or how, how could you try to handle all, the, all that situation with the trade deadline as a team? I'm not the GM. Uh, that's not my job to do. Uh, we only have two days left if we're going to do anything. Uh, whenever something's brought up, you know, it's brought to my attention. But, you know, as of now, I haven't. So uh, we uh, we sit and wait, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I have to really give a damn. Fred. Hey, Brad. Um, Scott mentioned physicality tonight, uh, and that's something that a bunch of you guys have mess mentioned progressively. I I'm, I'm wondering on, on nights when you're not kind of feeling up to it because everybody has off days, how, how do you personally maintain your physicality so that you maintain that level? You think I had an off night tonight? No, that wasn't my implication at all. Oh, okay. what, I, what I'm asking is, Everybody has their off days. Yeah. And as a player, you still got to go out and play. So yeah. what are your tricks for when you're you're kind of going into it and you're feeling those days for maintaining those physicalities so you can bring it every day? Uh, that's something you can control. Whatever you can control, that's what you go out and do. You can control playing hard. You can control being physical. You can control running the floor. You can control boxing your man out. You can control setting the screen. You can control coming off the screen very hard. You can control not turning the ball over. There's a lot of stuff we can control that we don't do. So to answer your question, you mentally have to do it. Um, you got to have heart. Can't teach that. You got to have dog. Can't teach that either. So uh, you, you got to be mentally ready to go. Like this is best league in the world. You know, uh, it doesn't get any higher than this. And if you can't get yourself ready to play every night, then you shouldn't be here. Even if it isn't your night. Neil. Fred, you guys are 7-19 and 19 when you have 14 or more turnovers. What do you think has led to some of your guys' high turnover games so far this season? And where do you think are areas that you can cut down on them? Just be more precise and be certain with our decision-making. I know I had dumbass turnovers tonight. Uh, just being smarter with the ball, stronger with the ball. Uh, a lot of times I feel like I should have shot it versus passing and that led to turnovers. So uh, being more aggressive. I think when we're too indecisive and, you know, not attacking, 
No, that's one of the mistakes I made. Ava? Dan, how do you approach the team after nights like this when it's obviously a, a really frustrating outcome? And, and like you said, stuff that went wrong with stuff that you could control. Is there any, on your part as a team leader, like you having to kind of word things the right way or you just do come out and are you just kind of frank about everything? Uh, I mean, you got to pick and choose your battles. You can't just be negative and, you know, pounding guys all the time. Um, I understand there's a time and place for it. And right now is not that time. Uh, you know, we, we need to reflect on what we're doing as a team individually and as, you know, as a unit. You know, we're not, we're not putting it all together like we were before. Um, you know, so it's just, we got to get back to that. Um, and it starts with defense. You know, we got to, we got to accept the challenges that are on defense and, uh, that's where we're losing the game. Like we could talk about offense all we want, but we gotta guard somebody. 